Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Well, I'm super excited. Another locality boa litter has been born and more babies are on the ground. So right now I'm gonna go to check out the babies. We'll get the mother out, cleaned up and situated, and we'll see what we have. So let's take a look at those babies. I was doing my morning checks of the rabid females and I can see this Longicata longtail boa has given birth. Her due date was I think two days from now, so do any time around now. And she actually is a little bit defensive. She kind of struck out at me, so I'm not going to get too close. I'm just going to gently remove her from the enclosure and give her a soak in lukewarm water. And then we can take a closer look at the babies. But it's just been a super busy last week. Just a couple days ago, my qual key litter was born. And a few days before that, the coops pestel. So super excited to have even more babies on the ground. So let's get this female soaking. Mother Bo is soaking now and you know she's just a little defensive which they sometimes get when they're defending their babies makes sense and this is her first time litter and it looks like a nice big litter I don't see any slugs I see some yolk there's another baby kind of hanging out on the side here so and they look nice they look like they're fully formed and in good shape most of them look like they're moving. I, th I see one I think might be a stillborn, but uh, we'll have to take a closer look. There you can see that one on the left right there might be a stillborn. And then you can see some yolk down there. Some little guys trying to get out of their amniotic sacs. So this was a six year old female from uh, Vin Russo's bloodline produced by Sonia Komu. And supposedly the pair were hep for anerythristic. So I might have uh, some aneries here if that's the case, 25% statistically. But I think with these Longicata, it's sometimes hard to tell if they're anerythristic since they're kind of black and white as it is. They don't have too much color, but I'll have to take a closer look. I pulled out anything that wasn't a live baby and actually those what I thought were yolks those are actually slugs they're just kind of weird they're kind of soft sometimes the slugs are really hard and rubbery these are really soft and very gooey and then you can see there was unfortunately one stillborn and so not sure why this guy didn't make it uh, he looks fully formed you know sometimes they're just not uh, faded to make it in the world. Looks like he might have a few kinks in the tail. See that tail right there? It's a little bit kinky looking. So these guys will end up uh, in my garden, returned to the earth, and hopefully nourish some plants. Uh, but luckily, the rest of the litter look like they're live and kicking. So I'm just gonna quickly take them out of the tub. I removed the litter. I have them now in a 56 quart sterilite tub on paper towels and it's a pretty good size litter 17 babies I of course felt around thoroughly in all the substrate I actually pulled a couple buried ones out that had hidden under the substrate but they all look pretty good I saw a few have a little bit of a tail kinking or kind of you know short slightly club tails which isn't all that unusual to see in different boas um, and you know if the clubbing is in there or the kinking is in the tail it's usually not that big a deal it's when you have it in the vertebrae that block the digestive system that uh, usually isn't compatible with life but when you have the, just slight tail kinking these guys usually grow up fine uh, so they'll you know make it and I think I see some anerythristic babies though it's kind of hard to tell because they're still covered with goo and I'll just have to wait until after they shed to figure out for sure. Another thing I noticed, some of them have some striping. You can see there, there's one right in the middle who's got striping towards this tail. And this is one of the ones that has a slightly club tail. You can see a close up of his tail there. It's a little short, a little bit kinked. But kind of a cool looking pattern. 
And the long jacata are really unusual boas because they look a lot different as adults. As babies, they have these light color, or not light, but lighter colors, and they develop a lot of dark pigment as they age. It's kind of like the IMG, the increasing melanin gene, occurring naturally in a locality boa. But they also have quite a few different patterns, as is the case with this litter. I just grabbed one trying to escape there and put him back in. As you can see, some of them are more active than others, but you got to keep an eye on these. You know, with this many little baby boas, it can be a little bit hectic keeping track of them all. Here's a couple more kind of snuggling up on the side, give you an idea about the differences in the patterns. Some of the babies definitely look like they are darker overall than others. Not sure if these guys are anarthristic. Some of them I can see some red tones in, which, you know, that wouldn't be anarthristic. The anary just has a lack of the red and yellow pigments, more like a black and white uh, photograph. But as I mentioned, it's a little too early to tell which, if any of these guys are anarthristic. So basically I'm just going to keep them in this setup for about a week. You know, changing the paper towels quite often because of all the goo. It starts to go bad real quick. I'll just put them on a 90 degree hot spot on about half of the enclosure. And they should be fine in here for about a week before they shed. And then they'll be moved to individual enclosures and then offered their first meal. But really beautiful litter. Really nice. It's just been a really exciting last uh, couple weeks. I think I have more boas in the collection now than at any point in my history of snake keeping with all these new births. So all these babies are going to keep me busy for a while getting them established and ready to go. But it should be exciting what I have available in a couple months for the locality boa enthusiasts out there. So please stay tuned. Our mother boa is done soaking and I have her back in her clean tub and she looks really deflated you know not a huge boa maybe six feet so all those babies were taking up a lot of space inside of her but she's got a nice clean tub fresh substrate i don't know if i mentioned in my other birthing videos but i always take the tubs in the backyard and spray them down with a high pressure nozzle get all that gunk out and then disinfect them with some diluted chlorhexidine and she's also much calmer now that she's had the soak and she's ready to rest and recover from her big litter. So great. Uh, she did great. Really happy with this litter. So I'll just let her rest and she'll get a much deserved rat uh, tomorrow and start to put that weight back on. It's been a while. I just came to clean the paper towels, get rid of some of that old dried up goo. As you can see, they're kind of clumping together in the corner as they usually do. Gives them safety in numbers. And they're just gonna stay together for about a week or so till they shed. So overall, real nice litter. Lots of different patterns. Uh, some of them do have somewhat of a kink tail. Probably around uh, four or five of them. So we'll just have to see. The kinky doesn't look all that bad. I don't think there's any with kink spines. Hopefully that they won't have the kink in their spine because that uh, sometimes can preclude the uh, passage of food and digestion. Usually if the tail is just slightly kinked, it's uh, not that big a deal. It's just kind of a cosmetic issue. There's a close up of one of the kink tails and you can see it's kind of bent. I haven't seen a kink tail like this before it looks almost like a little bend and the tail is maybe slightly short so I'm not exactly sure what caused that um, sometimes these things just happen you know and sometimes it just uh, you get random errors or something during development here's another close-up they're just kind of bunched up together to try to conserve heat and as I mentioned, these parents were both hat for anneries, supposedly. I don't know for sure if I have any anneries. It's kind of hard to tell with these Longicata since they're already kind of black and white as it is. You know, they have some subtle reds in them. So maybe after they shed, I can tell for sure if I got any anneries or not. As you can see, I added a water dish 
Not that they'll probably drink that much, but it just raises the humidity and sometimes they want to take a little bit of soak to help them with their shed, which should happen in about a week or so. And after that, they'll go off to their individual tubs and hopefully start feeding quite quickly. To wrap up the video, I thought I'd show you guys the father of the litter. This guy is a Vin Russo bloodline, Lanchicata boa, born in 2016. And so you can see he's uh, quite dark. He's probably not quite as dark as the female. He still has these areas of the kind of dark caramel brown between his really dark saddles. And he's kind of got more well-formed saddles than my female. But you can see the beautiful patterns on his side and the whites and creams and dark colors as well. And then of course he's got the really dark head barkings and all the belly speckles. And so this guy, you can see he's a good size. You know, these guys, I wouldn't call them dwarfs, but they're, no, they're certainly not giants. This guy's about six feet and it's a typical, you know, decent sized adult. They're pretty easy to manage. They're not really aggressive. They're pretty easy as far as the husbandry. Pretty similar to a, you know, a common boa, boa imperator, or, you know, like a common Colombian pet store type boa, but uh, definitely a different look. And so some of these guys from this litter will be available. It's probably going to be about two months before they're ready to go. I need to get them uh, shed at least probably twice and fed at least four or five times. So I imagine that's going to take me until around September. But I'll keep you guys posted, you know, with an update video once these babies have shed and I can get a better idea of what I have in the litter. And also, you know, I'll announce when they, they're going to be ready for their new homes. So if you're interested in a Longicata boa from this litter, probably the best thing is just to pay attention to this channel. Subscribe if you haven't already for regular updates on available, available boas. And if you've been following the channel, I've had, you know, a number of litters recently. So a couple months from now, there'll probably be quite a few different locality boas available. So, you know, save your pennies and pay attention to the channel if you've been looking to get into a really nice locality breeding project. Or you just want a really nice pet, very high quality locality boa. Anyway, I hope you liked the video and found it somewhat uh, helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line. This guy's uh, kind of getting antsy, so he's going to go back in a sec. Anyway, thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.